Hi, this is Feed Me, representing Sotovoce here at East West Studios with my razor blade. And I'm going to show you through a track I wrote called Rat Trap. Okay, so I started off the track uh, with quite a defined lead sound. It, it's not complicated at all. In fact, it probably took me a few minutes to make, but it was more the kind of dynamics of the sound as it played a melody that made it interesting to me. So um, I started off with a very simple uh, massive patch, which was basically this. <laughs> So you can see it's a single saw wave, it's just got a slight release on it, envelope wise. A little bit of reverb, there's, there's really not a lot to it. It was more the reverb running into a distortion, which is kind of a, a, something I would have done in the past with guitars and rigging up pedals and things. Just a way of getting the sound to, to give like interesting textures as it moves through a melody, which was basically... The rest was basically caused by just those notes overlapping. So the next stage was to get the same sound and run it through a distortion. The other technique I used in this track a lot was uh, kind of parallel processing. So preserving quite a lot of the sound in one instance where I'm distorting it a certain way and then repeating a second channel which is doing a different type of distortion and then just balancing the two and then rooting them back together. By doing this, I can keep the dynamics present in the first instance and kind of destroy them totally in another and add just the right amount of coloration back when they come back together. So this is exactly the same sound now, but running through parallel distortion and then put back together. <laughs> You get quite a lot of like artifacts and stuff from the distortion. So it's going through uh, camel fat, which is pretty hard to get now that they've gone bust. Um, and the old instance of trash, because this is an old project. Um, I'd recommend getting the new one. Anyway, and then it's also rooted, as you can see, through two other channels. Well, this channel is going back through here. It's kind of messy rooting, but I didn't think you were going to see this. <laughs> Processing wise, um, the, the dynamics of the sound are controlled through the track primarily by different instances of it, if I want to bring the volume up or down, um, and then a simple high and low pass just to kind of control it. So by processing the high and low pass before the distortion, the distortion pulls up on the sound as it's shrunk by the passes. So you get kind of extra bite to it rather than doing it after the processing, which would give, give a much cleaner sound. Um, split between these two, basically doing the same thing. Then uh, it was basically just a pulse. <laughs> end of the melody. So once I had those two down, the track for me kind of wrote itself. It was a case of having drums that had the right feel and probably the most important aspect was having a mix that was convincing in this sort of style. Something that to me sounded kind of trap, kind of hip hop, but also still synthetically convincing like as, as a kind of congruous unit of sound. I wanted it to sound like one big thing. The other thing that kind of, I always think in the tracks like this where the ingredients are so simple, that's important to play with is uh, space and spatial separation. So I've got the lead automated so that in the solo sections, in the build-ups, it's quite mono. The, the stereo is brought right in and then when it hits the drop, the stereo is spread out. So you get a, a dynamic difference left to right as well as volume and as well as frequency. It's just a way of like kind of pulling the sound away from you as much as possible in the breakdowns and then throwing it back in your face when it drops. So uh, from the breakdown to the drop, it would sound like this. There's 
few other like melodic layers in there. So um, later on in the track, we've got like um, a kind of good, the bad, and the ugly style, like Guns at Dawn chime thing, which I thought would just kind of set like a bit of tension. That's also done with Massive. I've also got this link to an FM8 running in effects mode. Um, there's a really nice reverse delay in FM8 that I use a lot for more progressive house stuff. But it's a good way of kind of blurring a sound, again, to take it further away from me. So I play with that a bit in the track as it goes on, moving the sound further away or further towards, depending on where that's set. Um, other layers are kind of like, this is just pieces of the reverb of the sound, chopped and rearranged to give a kind of, you can see, I still use this old Fruity Slicer, they have a newer version, but I like the simplicity of this. Sometimes I just want the simplest possible answer. I don't want to fuss around with too many buttons. So, so um, this is just pieces of the sound. So you can see I've just split it across a kind of MPC style and then um, basically in the same manner I just would hit them on touchpads or off the keyboard, play a rhythm with it and then it was just a way of giving um, a background texture that was still sonically related to the main elements without having to go too complicated because I really didn't want to add too many things to this track. So that just gave this. It's like slightly rhythmic, it sits in the background, but it sets the key and tone for the track as it builds up. So there's a rough breakdown of the synths that are in Rat Trap. Moving on, I'm going to talk about the percussion and the drums. <laughs> 